Hi, I'm Joe DiMatteo of the Len and Joe Ask the Pharmacist uh, radio broadcast. Thanks for tuning in uh, with us again today. We uh, wanted to go back and talk a little bit more specifically uh, about acne. Had a, had a number uh, of, of requests and a lot of activity uh, regarding the acne uh, posting that we just put up. We felt maybe it would be appropriate to go back and attempt to define some more areas for you a little more specifically. Gave you a lot of general thoughts before, overview, problems, complications with medications. Um, not that that's a bad thing, it's a good thing. You need to be aware, you need to be educated. But we also want to talk a little more specifically today about approaches, about better approaches. So once again, uh, I'd like to encourage you to go to our radio broadcast. Uh, Len and I broadcast Coast to Coast, XM, Satellite Radio. We're on local stations in Pittsburgh, Boston, Atlanta, in the Cleveland, Ohio area. So you can go to our website at lenandjoe.com, find out where those specific times and where you can listen to us and, and specifically when. Uh, let's get into it. Let's get into this scenario. I mentioned in the previous posting that there's a couple of nutrients that are very, very helpful for the treatment of acne. Diet plays a huge role. I'm going to build on that today. I want to get into the specifics. I think the basics, topical washing, critical. Keep the face clean. A lot of different this, uh, thought process about different types of uh, soaps. You want soaps, for example, that are non comedogenic inducing. You don't want soaps that are very super fatted or have a lot of other chemical agents that can clog or adhere and plug up pores, number one. Number two, uh, not a bad idea to use even some calendula types of soaps, uh, natural agents that are cleansing and natural antibacterial and anti-inflammatory. Number three, try not to rub the areas or irritate the tissue. Only aggravates. Remember, not only is it infectious in nature, but it's inflammatory in nature. We want to deal with the inflammation process. We don't want to aggravate that process any. Let's keep that in mind as well. Some of the natural clay masks that are out there are pretty helpful. Uh, they have um, minerals, mineral salts. Some of them contain some aloe. Not a, bad, not a bad idea. Some of them contain some clay-based compounds. They adsorb toxic remnants. But we want to make sure the basics are we want to clean, we want to wash frequently, don't aggravate the tissue. Be careful about excessively drying the tissue. There are some very aggressive approaches that we can take here. I love salicylic acid preparations, and we compound them over in the compounding lab. Um, but today, again, specific but yet still general. I don't have a specific array of products that I'm going to offer you. I want to expand your thinking as to what to do here. Let's bounce over quickly back to the diet scenario because I want to focus on that once again. The diet issues, we must reduce dairy. Dairy, because of its allergen-inducing capabilities, dairy, highly associated um, literature, some of it very consistent, some of it inconsistent. Experientially, in our practice and in our consulting, we've seen dairy uh, reduction make a major uh, influence and have a major impact for folks. Fried foods, deep fried foods, why? Is it just because they're fried? No, they're pro-inflammatory. mentioned a moment ago, it's partly an inflammatory process. And what we're after is reducing the inflammatory process. If I'm consuming foods that are pro-inflammatory, I'm just aggravating the whole situation. Deep fried foods, to me, are classically a no-no. Third area, sweets, sugars, white, refined, they have to be kept to a minimum. Foods that are what we call high glycemic load foods, spike blood sugars, we've got to reduce them. We've got to have foods that have more antioxidants in them. We've got to have foods that are higher in fiber. So what am I talking about antioxidants? More fresh vegetables, fresh fruits, berries, blueberries, blackberries, strawberries, uh, foods that have natural anti-inflammatory components to them, and the flavonoids that are in the foods that I just mentioned do. Number two, they're higher in fiber, so that means they're a low glycemic load food. They won't spike your blood sugars because remember, I'm after insulin, and blood sugar as well. We need to stabilize that. Antioxidant rich foods, berries, blueberries, blackberries, think of colors, rich colors. They have antioxidant capabilities, anti-inflammatory capabilities. Uh, the last um, area that I want to talk to you as well about might be being careful about margarine based compounds. If you're going to do a little bit of butter, I'd rather in the home that you use organic sources of butter. 
If you've got to use, you need some type of milk, I think you consider um, sparingly, sparingly, some organic milk, sparingly. I really think that needs to be reduced or pretty much eliminated. Secondarily, soy milks, rice milk, nut milks are great options as well. Let's move in quickly into the supplement category. Vitamin A, and I have to qualify this. Number one, you should not be doing this without the supervision of a naturopath, of a clinical nutritionist, someone trained in this area. I think Len and I are uniquely positioned because of our pharmacology backgrounds, our naturopathic uh, training, and as well as our certification in clinical nutrition. So we understand pharmaceuticals, the clinical implications of them. We understand how they interact in the body, the physiology, and then also the nutrient and the natural approaches. So I want to qualify this. Um, I, I need to make sure that you understand that some of these recommendations, you have to be very careful, childbearing age, the potential for pregnancy, uh, some of the nutrients I'm going to mention could possibly be teratogenic. I mean, they can impact uh, the fetus. Um, so let's, let's make sure we understand that. Must be done under supervision. But you need to know that you do have options, and they're very holistic, they're very naturopathic, cover that in the first posting. If you haven't seen the first posting, you can go back and view that one as well. We use a specific form of zinc. Zinc is very unique because zinc um, has anti-inflammatory properties, has antibacterial uh, mechanisms within the skin, and also influences how testosterone is converted away from testosterone to DHT and so on. So zinc has a multifactorial aspect and Secondarily, it's just very good for the skin. Zinc plays a key role. We use a specific form. Zinc, uh, an aspartated citrated form. The elemental amounts of zinc are 25 milligrams, and we use up to 100 milligrams a day for certain periods of time. I'm qualifying that. Um, I do not want you to run out and just start doing this kind of on your own. We qualify them over specific, specified periods of time. Number two, I'll use very high doses of vitamin A, um, and usually in a liquid format um, that you can add to a little bit of juice, etc. And I may do some very high doses for specific periods of time because of sebum production, skin health, vitamin A is very helpful. Note that the pharmaceutical Accutane was based on that concept, only what they did was take a, and make a synthetic version of that vitamin A, very powerful yet very toxic. Well, we're taking a natural agent. A lot, of, a lot of dispute, well, vitamin A is toxic, you can't do it, it can affect a fetus in the womb, and it can in high doses, so we have to qualify, and there are warnings. Uh, number two, you can't stay at high doses for extended periods of time. You must then reduce those doses to let clearing, because you don't want to store um, this fat-soluble vitamin. Um, essential fatty acids, molecularly distilled uh, we triple refine ours. Ours is ultra-filtered, micro-filtered three times, molecularly distilled omega-3 fatty acids. First of all, the omegas are wonderful for skin health, moisturizes the skin. Too many of us eat the wrong types of fats, so there's another benefit. And it has wonderful anti-inflammatory mechanisms. We use a particular form called omega-3-800s, specifically because it's not 800 milligrams of fish oil, it's 800 milligrams of the active ingredients, EPA and DHA. And we may go fairly high in those, maybe as much as four a day. Natural sunlight doesn't get much better. Your child needs to be out in the sun. Uh, I don't want to get into all the specifics, but the type of rays that is received from the sun has antibacterial activity. In our first posting, we taught you that it's bacteria within the pores that's trapped by thickened, congealed sebum. First of all, we need to do these nutrients and also the diet aspects that liquefy the sebum to keep it moving so that the pore is not congested and clogged and the bacteria is not trapped. Utilize some of these nutrients and then natural sunlight whenever you can, big help. And actually certain, there are specific sun lamps that can be useful. That's another discussion for another time. A quality multiple uh, can be very, very helpful. We use a prep called Daily Essentials. Stress plays a huge role here. So stress and cortisol production can be an issue. We've got to use a quality multivitamin as well. Daily essentials maybe up to four a, day, four a day. Folks, I hope you've learned a little something. I'm going to cut this because we're running out of time on this posting. So um, you can go to our website at leninjo.com or you can reach us at mscompounding.com. Thanks for tuning in. See you the next time.